Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video you will learn all HTTP status codes that you need to know in order to build an API or just to understand how frontend and backend can communicate. So let's jump right into it. So here I opened the link to Wikipedia with all possible status codes. But you don't need to know them all, because we are not using them all. We are using quite a few of them, and I will talk only about things that you really need during development. So the first question is what is status code at all? So normally we have a client and a server, and they are communicating with each other. So actually your browser is a client, and the server is some server where our page is being rendered. And I'm not talking even about frontend and backend now. Even for example the link to Wikipedia has client, your browser and server. And if we will open DevTools and jump to the network and reload the page, as you can see we have here a lot of network requests. And here we have a status, which means actually the first link is the HTML page of Wikipedia. And here you can see status code 304, and in the response we are getting our HTML. So exactly about this status code we will talk. So why status codes are important at all? This is the smallest amount of information that our server can give to the client. So actually our server doesn't need to say, ok, I have this and that problem, it just gives back the status code. And then client from this status code can directly understand the type of the problem. And actually, as you can see here, all our status codes have three digits. And actually the most important is the first digit, because this is the type of the error. For example, when everything is started from 2, it means that our request is successful. And then we have two more digits to specify what exactly was successful. So let's start with the first group. And the first group is 100 plus requests. These are informational response. And we don't need to talk about them at all, because you will never see them during communication with client or server. And of course you won't use them in the APIs. So we can just skip them and go to 300 requests. And 300 request is our success. This is the most popular request that happens. Because actually when client makes some request to our server, we are getting some information back, this is success. So actually, as you can see, there are a lot of different requests and you don't need to know all of them. So the first one that you need to know is 200 and this is OK. Which means actually that server just say OK, everything is fine and you can get back some response. And actually 200 is a generic request, which means it's not specified inside what exactly happened. It's just OK and some response came, or maybe not. The next request that you need to know is 201, it's create. So actually if request was successful and additionally it created something inside database, then it is 201. And I just want to mention that a lot of people who are building API for example are using 200 requests a lot. And you can create something and get back 200 and not 201. And of course everything will work but it's not that specific. And in this case you can exactly say that something was created. And the last request from 200s is 204, no content. Which actually works exactly like 200, so we are getting the success from the backend, but we are saying that we don't give any content back to our client. And this is really nice to know that yes, everything was fine, but we don't even need to start reading something, because there is no content back. Now let's talk about 300 requests. So 300 requests are all regarding redirection. So actually if your page was moved to another page or you just got a redirect to other page, these are all 300 requests. And you just need to know three of them. So first of all is 301, it is moved permanently, which means your page was moved to another URL. This is why you are getting back 301 and your request will be automatically redirected to another URL. 
the next redirect status code that you need to know is 302 and the name is found which doesn't make any sense for me because the name moved temporary is much better. It just means the same like 301 but your redirect is there temporary which means you are redirected now but it's not forever. The last status code that you need to know from 300s is 304, not modified. This is really nice status code for caching. So actually we can set caching in header on our requests, which means we are saying, okay, uh, our request needs to be cached for, for example, one day, which actually means we are getting back not modified and then we are just getting cached version back, because nothing was changed, this is why we don't need to really get the data, which means this is just much faster. Now we are starting with 400 requests, and actually 400 and 500 are generally bad, but 400 means that they are just bad from the server side, and 500 means that everything is broken completely. The most popular request here is 400 bad request, which is actually just a generic request which says, ok, it was not proceeded successfully, this is it. You can of course get some data back, but they are not mandatory. Now the next request is 401 unauthorized, which actually means that you are not allowed to see the response of this request just because you are not logged in. This request you are normally getting if you didn't log in and you try to get some data or some page for logged in user. The next status code is 403 forbidden. This is exactly the same purpose like 401. So the URL is forbidden for you, but it's forbidden not because you're not logged in, but maybe you don't have the role, for example, of admin to get this request, which means server just says, okay, you don't have enough permissions to get this request. The next status code is the most popular of all status codes, is 404 not found. So if your resource was not found or your API does not exist, you must get back 404. The next status code that probably you will see sometimes, but not that often, is 405, method not allowed. So normally you are making, for example, get or post request, but normally it is happening with patch. So you are making patch request and your backend is saying request is not allowed, because this method like patch was not specified and allowed. This is why our server is saying us we can't do this request. So normally the problem is in the configuration of your backend or your server, and not in your client. The next status code is quite funny, this is 418, I'm a teapot. So actually we are not using such status code in real project and it was just made and added like an April Fool's joke. But sometimes you can get this question, for example, on interview, so you need to at least know what is it about. The next status code, which people are not using that often, but it is really amazing, this is 422 unprocessable entity, which actually the nice status code for validation. So if you send something for backend, but you didn't specify all fields or your fields are not correct, this is really nice to get back 422 because you exactly see, okay, the problem is inside validation or the problem is with the data that I send it. And we are almost done, we just need to go through 500 section. So let's scroll a little bit. 500s are server errors, which generally means everything is broken completely. And the first request that you need to know is just 500 internal server error, which means you just pass something and our server was not ready for this request and it's just broken. Or it's just broken in the source code or whatever, it is just a generic request to say that everything is super bad. The next status code is 501 not implemented. If you are just creating your API, it makes sense to put there this status code, because your API is not ready yet, but for example somebody from frontend can want to start using it, and they can see ok the request is 501, which means it's not implemented yet. 
The next status code, which is really important, is 502 bad gateway. If you are getting such status code, it means that your server normally is using some proxy, for example, Nginx, proxying the requests to some web servers and they are down or they are broken. This is why you are getting not directly internal server error, but bad gateway, because it was the problem with proxying of the request. And last but not least is 503 service unavailable. It generally means that server still works, but for example has huge load now. So a lot of users are trying to get their requests back. This is why you are getting the status. It generally means the server is too busy to give you back a response. So these were all status codes that you need to know in order to write real projects. And as you saw, I omitted really a lot of status codes because we just don't use them. This is why you just need to learn status codes that I mentioned. Also, if you want to improve your programming skills, I have a lot of advanced courses regarding different web technologies. And if you are interested, I will link them down in the description box below. And if you like this video and you want more content like this, don't forget to put thumbs up to support me and subscribe to the channel. And if you didn't like this video, consider watching it once again on increased speed, it might help. And I will see you in my next video.